breakfast and I've had a shower, washed my hair, got ready for the day and now I'm so excited. I got this in the post the other day but I haven't opened it yet because I wanted to wait until I was filming this video. I have got a book of the month parcel. Today's video is sponsored by book of the month which I'm so excited about oh my god so many of you have like followed me from all of my reading vlogs and stuff so when they contacted me I was like this is perfect everyone's gonna love this but yeah book of the month is a subscription service where they send you a new book every month you actually get to choose the book they give you five options each month and then you choose the one that you think would suit you the most I thought I would show you which books I've been sent this month so so the first book that I have is A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham. This one is about a serial killer and if you know me, I love true crime. I know I'm going to love this. Next we've got A History of Wild Places by Shia Earnshaw. Again, this is like a crime book about a missing woman. <sighs> I love it. So this one is called Olga Dies Dreaming by Zochil Gonzalez. Sorry, I can't pronounce the first name. It's about two siblings who are looking for like the American dream, but there's a hurricane and their estranged mother like comes back. So yeah, excited to read that one. Okay, the next book, it's called Somebody's Daughter, a memoir by Ashley C. Ford. And this is a coming of age memoir. I love coming of age books. And then lastly from the main selection of books is The Holiday Swap, which is a nice festive book. And this is a classic like twin trope, I guess, where they swap places because they're both feeling like they need a bit of a reset in their lives. And this is giving me a parent trap, two of a kind, which are both movies that I loved when I was younger. So I'm really excited to read this. And the last book is not actually part of the main selection, but new members can choose to pick this book and it is called The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. This is actually a book of essays. So yeah, this is like one of the extra books that you can choose. These are all of the books that they sent me and I cannot wait to read them all. If you want to try the subscription out for yourself or maybe gift it to someone else, especially for Christmas, <gasps> Oh my god that would be the best present i might have to actually put that on my list plus it saves time like having to search for a new book having one just sent to me would just make my life so much easier i think it's a really nice way to kind of broaden your horizons try out new genres and maybe some more unknown authors as well so if you want to try out book of the month now is definitely the time to do it because they are doing an offer where you get your first book for just five dollars you can do that by using the code jolly so yeah thank you book of the month so much for sponsoring this video there'll be a link in my description box if you guys want to try out book of the month before i start any of those books i am going to try and finish this one when i first started reading this i thought it would be about max hastings the guy in the last book who is a rapist and i thought it was going to be about the whole trial but it's actually morphed into something else about a serial killer and like a stalker which is really creepy i really like this so far so i'm gonna continue reading Finished as good as dead. It's done. It's finished. 
and it was amazing. If you are a true crime junkie, you've just got to read this trilogy. Like, oh, I've never read anything like it in the YA kind of genre. I mean, it's pretty adult. It's pretty graphic. A few spoilers. I feel kind of conflicted about what ended up happening. Okay, big spoiler. Obviously, Pip killed Jason Bell. I don't know how I feel about that because Pip was like this shining beacon of perfectness and now she's a murderer and I think no matter who you are and whoever the person is you shouldn't kill people even if they deserve it and I know you can't trust the justice system in today's society a lot of people get away with murder because there's not enough evidence etc so like I kind of understand why she did it but it also just I don't know really hurt me <laughs> to see her go through all of that to then have to live pretty much in fear for the rest of her life even though max is in jail that doesn't mean it's not going to come out later in her life same thing with the dt killer someone else was wrongly convicted and then later in life they found out who it really was so who's to say that that's not going to happen to her when she's like 50 and she also has to live with the fact that she hit a man in the head with a hammer nine times so yeah those are my thoughts i think it was a good way to end the series very dramatic just what we need now i want to start another book obviously i have a mini haul here for you i bought the next two books in the shadow and bone trilogy this one's the next one do i read this or do i read this book from the book of the month little parcel that i got this is super like festive i definitely want to read this before christmas i think i'm gonna save this one for next week and i want to wait until i'm a little bit closer to christmas so i'm gonna start siege and storm when I wake, the moon's still fading in the sky there are shapes around the five pages in once again they just jumped straight into it i actually feel like i wasn't really in the story before loads of action started like it just came on a bit too quick for me especially because i've read other books in between this one and the first one i feel like i needed a little bit more time to get into this world before things that mattered actually started happening but it was like exciting all the same and i have no idea where it's gonna go i just really love the grisha verse but yeah i thought because it's december it's the last month of the year oh my god it's almost 2022 i thought it would be fun to tell you guys what my reading goals are for the next year i don't really like new year's resolutions because i never actually stick to them but if i set a goal then i feel like i'm way more likely to do it and apart from an amount of books that i want to read 
I've never set reading specific goals because I've just got into it so much more over the past few years I thought it would be fun to do that and it might give you guys some ideas as well so I've written down five my first goal is the number of books that I want to read which is 52 it's the same as this year it's just one a week and that should be doable I feel like it's not too many I've seen some people set like a 300 book reading goal which is literally almost one a day how how do you have time for that how do you have the mental energy for that i don't so one a week is more than enough for me even if i fall behind in it like i'm still reading quite a bit and yeah that's good good for me so yeah i want to read 52 books next year my second goal is one that I'm actually really excited for. I'd like to read at least one non-fiction book a month. As you probably know from all of my books, I don't read non-fiction, like ever. I don't remember the last non-fiction book I read. I want to educate myself more. And I know you can learn things through fiction. I just know that there are loads of non-fiction books out there that are so amazing, especially since I'm not in school anymore. I feel like I need to educate myself. That's the goal, one non-fiction at least per month. Okay, the next one is going to be probably my hardest one to follow. I want to keep my physical TBR pile 10 books or less. So basically, I'm not going to allow myself to buy more books if I've still got at least 10 books at home already <laughs> and that is to help my wallet and also just to not waste books we're trying not to over consume number four i'm going to sort out my goodreads tbr there are so many books on there that i actually don't care about for some reason i put books in my want to read shelf that i don't actually know anything about and that i don't care about it usually happens around the time of year when all of the like prizes are coming out best non-fiction best ya best horror best historical fiction all of that because i usually just go through all of the lists and click want to read on pretty much all of them and it's just stressing me out seeing that i've got like 500 books to read so i definitely want to go through that weed out the ones that i actually know i just won't read and then my last goal for next year is to actually donate all of the books that i don't like i know a lot of people actually do keep every single book that they've ever read which is nice you know it's a library of your life but I feel like it's a bit pointless and some other people might be able to enjoy them even if you don't it's also just clutter in my room and space is taken up that i don't really have but yeah those are my reading goals for 2022 let me know if you've got anything yourself and if you met the ones that you made for this year i'm going to end this video here don't forget to check out book of the month in my description box and use the code jolly to get your first book for five dollars i hope you enjoyed this video reading with me and i will see you in my next one bye